This monitor is made by ViewSonic, but you'll get more or less the same monitor from HP, Dell and LG and probably even from a few other brands. This is because they all use LG's Nano IPS panel and therefore are pretty similar when it comes to the image that they display on screen. Of course, the implementation and feature set will vary between those different models and so do prices. So you might ask, why does this one cost roughly $100 to $200 US more than most of its counterparts? Well, first and foremost, it comes with a G-Sync module instead of just being G-Sync compatible. Leading to the question, is that worth the hefty premium? So let's find out. ViewSonic provided the monitor for the purpose of this video. They don't get any input on this video, nor did they try to. So everything reflects my own and honest opinion. First of all, what's so special about that LG Nano IPS panel that I now got the third monitor with this panel in for review? Well, it's fast. In fact, it's one of the fastest IPS panels we can get right now. Of course, fast pixels lead to less mirroring with fast moving objects, which is something we want for gaming and especially so for more competitive games. And here the XG270QG doesn't disappoint and performs exactly as good as its relatives, which means we're getting top notch performance. For some comparison, here's a factory menu tuned TN monitor. It's fair to say that this LG Nano IPS panel delivers roughly TN panel like performance. Now, if this isn't your first time hearing about this LG panel, you probably know that it's not exactly famous for its good contrast. And this monitor is no exception. I've measured a contrast ratio of 851 to 1. If you watch my reviews of the Dell and Omen monitor that come with the same panel, please note that I since upgraded my measurement device to a better one and those numbers are therefore not directly comparable. Expect all of those monitors to have more or less the same contrast ratio apart from the usual variance between panels. Now, so much for the similarities, but when it comes to G-Sync, the XG270QG has full-fledged G-Sync which obviously is much better than the G-Sync compatible certification that the others have got. Or is it? Well, there basically are four different tiers of G-Sync. First, there's uncertified, which basically means getting a monitor that's advertised as FreeSync capable. The FreeSync capability tells us that such monitor supports the standard VESA Adaptive Sync protocol that's available via the DisplayPort connection, which then could also be used with a compatible NVIDIA graphics card. A certified G-Sync compatible monitor basically works exactly the same way, but it was tested by Nvidia to make sure that G-Sync is working nicely. In contrast, the original G-Sync utilizes Nvidia's own hardware module to sync up the GPU and monitor. This piece of hardware is part of what makes those monitors more expensive. Though from a consumer standpoint, it doesn't really matter how the sync is achieved, but whether the experience is good or not, no matter which fancy piece of technology is working under the hood. And this is why the G-Sync module goes along with extensive testing in the NVIDIA labs and NVIDIA supposedly work closely with the monitor manufacturer during the development of such monitor to ensure a flawless G-Sync experience. There's a video of Linus showing some behind the scenes footage of Nvidia's process, which I can highly recommend watching. I'll leave that link down below. Other than that, it remains a bit of a mystery which tests they actually perform and how strict their criteria are. We basically just know that Nvidia are going through a suite of 300 different tests. G-Sync certified, however, only comes with testing against flickering, blanking and pulsing, which obviously are much fewer tests. So the performance of those monitors is much more dependent on what the monitor manufacturer does to build a good product. That's an even bigger factor for uncertified monitors, as Nvidia either did no testing at all, or the monitor even failed their tests. So if you don't like to inform yourself through reviews and tests, the different tiers of G-Sync basically are a shortcut telling you how likely it is that G-Sync works fine on a particular monitor. Uncertified monitors obviously come with the highest risk of G-Sync not working properly. And in the past I've tested many uncertified monitors and a few of them actually had flickering issues. But I'd say the majority provided a good or even a flawless G-Sync experience. 
Now, coming back to the LG Nano IPS panel, the Omen 27i and Dell S2721 DGF both are G-Sync certified and didn't show any G-Sync related issues at all during my testing, as we kind of would expect from a certified monitor. But this leads to the question of what a G-Sync module equipped monitor can do better than that. I mean, if the G-Sync experience already is flawless, that basically doesn't leave much room for improvement, right? Well, G-Sync only works inside a refresh rate window, so let's say we're getting flawless G-Sync, but only between 100 and 144 Hz, then that's a fail in Nvidia's eyes and the monitor ends up as uncertified. If it manages to sync frames from 144 down to 60 Hz, that's a pass and it qualifies for the G-Sync certification as 144 divided by 60 equals 2.4. And that's fulfilling Nvidia's requirement of a 2.4 to 1 or higher ratio between the upper and lower limit of the refresh rate range. Both the Dell and the Omen slightly exceed this requirement, sinking down to at least 50 Hz or FPS. But the Visonic with its G-Sync module tops that by granting sync frames throughout the refresh rate range, meaning G-Sync can be used from 1 to 165 Hz. Arguably, nobody needs frames to be synced that low, but it certainly doesn't hurt either. The NVIDIA Pendulum application allows FPS values as low as 20 and the ViewSonic indeed can sync its refresh rate up to that. That truly doesn't make 20 FPS look good, but that's definitely better than 20 FPS worth tearing on top of that. Towards the upper limit of the refresh rate range, both the certified and module equipped monitors behave very similar. In this best case scenario, the PC can maintain frame rates above the maximum refresh rate at all times and we're using a frame rate limiter to make sure that we're staying below the maximum refresh rate, which is 165Hz in this case. If we would leave the FPS uncapped, they would exceed the upper limit of the refresh rate range, meaning we're effectively losing G-Sync. So, we'll have to limit our frames either using the in-game limiter or an external tool like RTSS. Now, frame rate limiters aren't perfect, so we need to factor in FPS overshoots. Instead of limiting at 165 FPS, we need to go with something like 150 to make sure that we're staying below 165 FPS at all times, even when frame rates fluctuate. The perfect value will depend on the game and on which FPS limiter we're using. I like to look for a clear vertical structure in-game and pan from side to side while adjusting the FPS limit until the tear line moves downwards, towards the bottom of the screen or even completely disappears. I repeat that for every game individually so I can make sure that I have the optimal setting for every game. Now this really is the best way to use a G-Sync monitor and I personally even much prefer this over just running the game on cap without any sync. But with this best case G-Sync scenario, I have to say that the G-Sync module doesn't provide any noticeable advantage. Either the module or certified monitors and even many uncertified models are able to provide a great G-Sync performance close to the max refresh rate. And even when frame rates drop slightly or in games like COD where my poor 2070 Super isn't able to reach 165 FPS, I just fail to spot any advantages of the G-Sync module. But there's more. According to Nvidia's requirements, the G-Sync module also needs to be complemented by a factory color calibration, which isn't a necessity for certified monitors. There really isn't much information about specific requirements or targets, and given the white point isn't close to the common D65 target, their specs are probably pretty loose. At least the grayscale and gamma accuracy are good, but I've seen more accurate calibrations from monitors that didn't even get the G-Sync certification. On the plus side, the accuracy of the XG270QG can easily be improved with some simple OSD tweaks. And an individual calibration and profiling on top of that of course gives us excellent results. These are the just mentioned tweaks and as always you can download my ICC profile down below. Now, having a G-Sync module definitely gives the XG270QG some mild advantages over its G-Sync certified brothers. But I personally don't think that they are enough to justify a high price premium. However, the ViewSonic also has RGB. 
and RGB makes everything better as we all know. Well, jokes aside, the XG270QG is one of the most feature fledge monitors with that LG panel. Not only does it have RGB, it also comes with an USB hub, full adjustability and it even has a little headphone hook. All of those features in some form can be found in the other brand's monitors as well, but the Visonic is the only one with that LG panel that I'm aware of that has them all. On top of that we get flaps that can be attached on either side. And it's the only one that comes with integrated speakers. Well, ViewSonic really needs better quality control here, because the speakers of my unit actually have reverse polarity. If you are not an audio geek, this basically means the speakers are wired up the wrong way, resulting in a weird sound almost like some kind of strange surround sound effect. That's also what some people report online, so I guess my copy isn't the only one that has that problem. Luckily there is an easy fix through a piece of software called EQAPO. Just install it for the audio output, which is the ViewSonic, type in the following command line and the audio should be fixed. I'll leave that command line and a link to EQAPO in the description down below. Once taken care of that, the speakers actually are pretty good. That is for integrated speakers of course. Considering all its features, I'd almost call the XG270QG the most complete monitor with that LG Nano IPS panel. Almost. See, ViewSonic decided to cheap out on the DisplayPort connection by going with a 1.2 input instead of the better 1.4 standard. This effectively limits the use of 10-bit to 120Hz. 10 bits in this case are displayed via 8 bit plus FRC, and overall going without that isn't a huge sacrifice, just like I mentioned in my review of the Omen 27i. On the other hand, I would have liked to see a 1.4 input for the most expensive model, especially given even two of the cheaper options provide that. Anyhow, let's circle back to the big question Do you really need a monitor with a G Sync module? And I would say, no. Yes, the G-Sync module can do some things better than most G-Sync certified monitors, most notably the large sync range all the way down to a single hertz. But you really want to be on the other side of the FPS range anyway and have your G-Sync monitor running close to its maximum refresh rate. If your setup can maintain that, I don't see much use in a G-Sync module. But the more your PC struggles to keep your frame rate over the minimum refresh rate of a G-Sync certified monitor, the more attractive a G-Sync module equipped monitor becomes. Though the price premium of such a monitor could also be spent towards a rig upgrade, potentially lifting your FPS over the minimum refresh rate limit. So it really comes down to pricing. Taking the XG270QG as an example, it's usually around $100 to $200 US more expensive than the G-Sync certified monitors with the same panel. Well, I don't know the size of your wallet, but I definitely can say I personally wouldn't spend that much extra. Though don't get me wrong here, apart from some minor quirks, the XG270QG is a fantastic monitor, but that's true for the Dell S2721DGF and Omen 27i as well, but at a cheaper price. Thanks for watching and consider to subscribe.